Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I've had a few requests for uh, a video on how to use, uh, I guess, TensorBoard to look at the logs of uh, when you're training uh, with Koya SS uh, for Dreamboat LoRa, Dreamboat DI. One of the parameter uh, that you set is the logging folder where you're going to put the actual training logs. And how do you actually make use of that? So here's a quick tutorial on how you do that. Uh, so let me bring up here a, a window. Um, so that typically is what you're going to get if you go into Koyo SS and you start, uh, I guess, the GUI with the regular uh, GUI.ps1 or GUI.pat. You know how it works, right? You go and you start up the GUI. Now, what you can do, let's pretend I had started up the GUI here and you wanted to look at logs. Uh, there's many ways, like for one, if you're using Visual Studio Code uh, as your kind of window into the terminal and into the code within the repo, uh, you can click on this plus here to actually bring up a new terminal and then you could launch the TensorFlow from there. But let's say you have a, um, you're using like the regular terminal uh, for Windows and you need to navigate and start the tensor board, right? Um, so what do you do? So I'm going to go and navigate into where my Koya SS folder is located. And I need to activate first, and that's an important part. If you are sitting at the PowerShell prompt and you don't have any anything there, uh, any V and V active, then it's not going to work very well. You're going to try to type tensor and tab Sorry, tensor tab. It's not. It's going to find a whole bunch of stuff, but it's not going to surface tensor board. So how do you fix that? Is you activate your VENV first. So I'm going to go and activate the VENV. So VENV script activate. And now that I've got my virtual environment uh, for Python active, if I start to type tensor T and S and I hit tab, now it's going to show tensor board. So now that you, you know, TensorBoard is actually uh, ready to be used. Now, there's a, one parameter you need to give it for use, and you're going to go and find that parameter right there in your log folder. You just go and copy this folder name, and you're going to bring this into uh, the CLI. You're going to do TensorBoard.ext space dash dash log dir and OG. EIR, so log directory, essentially log there, and you're going to paste between double quotes, just in case you have spaces in your folder path, right? Uh, you put that between double quotes, you paste the actually copied um, path, and then you hit enter. And that's it. Now it's going to fire up TensorBoard, and it's going to listen on a given port, uh, which should be uh, I guess displayed here, which would be localhost 6006. Uh, hopefully I didn't have TensorBoard already running in one of my other window. Check, and yes, I had TensorBoard. So because I had it already running, let me cancel out of this one. Let me go back here. Let me cancel out of this so that we uh, we don't have like duplicate uh, process fighting for the same TensorBoard port. Now I'm just gonna restart it. And now we are gonna go and look at what this looks like. So. Control click on this thing is bringing up TensorBoard here behind. And now you're going to see that in my folder right now, I have a whole bunch of logs for a whole bunch of training sessions I did, right? So TensorBoard is going to show all of those. Uh, but if you want to focus on the last run, you just click here to unselect them all, and you're going to find the last run of uh, trying to build a model at the end of the TensorBoard files. And now you can look at that one. And let's say you wanted to look at how did this training run compared to the previous one I did. You could go and click on that previous run, and now it's going to overlay like the previous run that you did when you ran your uh, training versus the new one. So now you can see that this one obviously had a lot less or a lot fewer steps. I might have aborted at, uh, that run in the middle. Maybe I changed my parameters so it, it did a, a lot fewer steps or I just bumped up the batch training so it just 
instead of doing one, I did like eight at a time. So that's why it's eight times shorter. So it, it will vary, right? But you could, you could look at various runs of what it kind of looks. And this is how you can use TensorBoard to kind of track um, your model training over time. And you can compare different training run so see for example here i'm kind of overlaying the green and the uh, orange and you can kind of see that the orange is sort of higher so there is a higher loss compared to the green session so this could be interpreted as, as saying that maybe the training parameters i used for my green training session were better because it led to a lower loss it's not always the case, but typically if you have a lower uh, value for loss in the training session, then to means that your training parameters were better adapted to the training data set that you are working on. Uh, let's see if I bring up another one here. Now you can see that that kind of purplish line is actually lower, but it kind of eventually sort of aligned with the other one. So not a significant difference here. So how to interpret those things is subject I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a science on its own, right? So you can actually look at tensor board. So this one, you can see the purple is typically lower. So all of these things can be looked and you can layer many of them one on top of the other and look at the differences. So that's how you can use tensor board. Now, how you actually interpret the results of tensor board, it's really up to you. Here you can see like the uh, the adaptation learning rate that was kind of scaled over time, like over a number of steps, you can see that. Uh, so there is a whole bunch of different log information you can get here, depending on what is being logged, obviously, for the model. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. That's how you can sort of get TensorBoard. And when you're done using it uh, and you want to maybe look at some other logs training for other model, then you just go here, you control C, and it's going to stop TensorBoard from running. And now if I try to refresh it, if refresh this, obviously nothing's listening on that board, so it's just going to fail. So that was a quick how to run TensorBoard and how to kind of look at the different values within TensorBoard itself. Hope that was helpful and uh, have a great week, guys. Bye.